गुड मॉर्निंग अस्सलाम वालेकुम वी हैव प्रीवियसली डिस्कस द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ जनरल ट्रॉमा फॉलोड बाय द रीनल एंड यूरेटरल ट्रॉमा टुडे वी विल स्टार्ट विद द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ द ब्लडर ट्रॉमा माय कोलीग डॉक्टर उमर हैज मेड अ गुड प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन इट एंड होपफुली वी विल बी एबल टू लर्न समथिंग गुड फ्रॉम इट अस्सलाम वालेकुम माय नेम इज डॉक्टर मोहम्मद उमर जफर एंड टुडे वी विल डिस्कस द ब्लडर ट्रॉमा एज डॉक्टर उस्मान हैज ऑलरेडी टोल्ड so the learning objectives today are the introduction of the bladder trauma anatomy of bladder mechanisms of injury what are the types of bladder trauma its evaluation management complications and the most important thing how will we follow up the patient of a bladder trauma so bladder injury is may result from blunt penetrating or iatrogenic trauma full bladder is more susceptible to injury than empty bladder management varies from conservative to surgical Discuss, discussing the anatomy of the bladder in adults the bladder is located in the anterior pelvis and is enveloped by connective tissue and extra peritoneal fat this is the anterior prevesical space which is also known as the space of retzius and uh, the important thing to note here is the relation of bladder with the bone when the bone will flex, fracture it will directly uh, rupture the bladder and second thing that when the bladder fills it directly com- comes in contact with the uh, anterior abdominal wall so the uh, risk of rupture in a full bladder is greater than an empty bladder which is lo- uh, which is which seats deeply in the bony pelvis here it is a uh, peritoneal cavity and this is the peritoneum which covers the dome of the bladder this is another illustration which shows that the dome of the bladder is covered by the peritoneum these are the ureters uh, the uh, interior of the bladder which shows the ureteric orifices trigone of the bladder this is the urogenital diaphragm and uh, the bladder neck this image shows the layers of the bladder wall uh, we have the detrusor muscle submucosa lamina propria and transitional epithelium the blood supply of bladder is via superior and inferior uh, vesical arteries which are the branches of internal iliac artery and it uh, the bladder drains into the internal iliac veins now moving to our topic which is trauma trauma is defined as physical injury or a wound to a living tissue which is caused by extrinsic agent it is a sixth leading cause of death worldwide with a death toll of 5 million and disability to millions more management of trauma is based on atls guidelines which we have already discussed in the previous lectures focusing on the bladder trauma bladder injuries as a result of blunt trauma are rarely isolated 81 to 94% of patients have significant non urological injuries bladder injuries are 83 to 95% of the time associated with pelvic fractures however only 5 to 10% of pelvic fractures are associated with bladder injuries associated risk of urethral injury is 5 to 20 percent the bladder is generally uh, protected from external trauma due to its deep location in the bony pelvis when there is a sudden force which is applied to a full bladder it causes rapid increase in intravesical pressure that can lead to rupture without pelvic fracture moving on to the classification of the bladder trauma we can classify the bladder trauma on the basis of the location and on the basis of the etiology on the basis of the location uh, the bladder trauma is most commonly extra peritoneal which is in 80 to 90% of the cases and in 10 to 20% of the cases it is intra peritoneal etiology wise uh, the bladder trauma is divided into non iatrogenic which includes blunt and penetrating trauma and iatrogenic trauma which includes external or internal external in which we are performing the surgery which is external to the bladder while internal in which we perform the uh, surgery within the bladder this table shows that uh, motor vehicle accidents falls pelvic crush injury or blow to the lower abdomen are the most common factors which cause blunt uh, trauma to the bladder while uh, bony fragment gunshot wounds stab wounds and warfare injuries are the most common causes of penetrating injuries external atrogenic bladder trauma most commonly occurs in gynecological and ob- obstetric procedures 
urological procedures and general surgical procedures and internal iatrogenic trauma occurs in TURB and TURP. Just a second, Omer. Uh, almost all of us done TURP or at least assisted the procedure of TURP. Uh, the sense made that in TURP we resect the prostate. Then uh, how does the bladder perforation occurs in TURP? Anyone? Dr. Dure Furkani, any idea about it? Bladder perforation in TURP. It, uh, sir, it was around, I think, eight or nine months back. I've seen a patient in which it was referred to us with a bladder perforation and the surgeon was doing TURP. So initially, it googled my mind ke how the bladder perforation can occur in TURP. So I think we should focus on it. Uh, during the TURP, uh, bladder neck can be injured. Uh, right. Do you think doom of the bladder can be perforated while doing TURP? Yes, if uh, bladder uh, uh, bladder is not filled properly and uh, it can be injured during the... Yes, Dr. Usama. In TURP, uh, obturator reflex can also uh, perforate the bladder. <laughs> yes, right. Any other point? Sir, actually, we, uh, Dr. we are actually discussing the point of why or how bladder perforation occurs while doing TURP because the sense make that we are resecting prostate, then how does the bladder perforation can occur? So residents are making their input in, on it. Uh, so if it is a uh, thin wall bladder during the uh, alley evacuator that is used at the end, uh, sometimes it can get perforated. Yes, right. There are two or three mechanisms described of the bladder perforation while doing TURP. One is the mechanical, one can uh, perforate the bladder while inserting the resectoscope or... The other way is if you don't open the outflow channel, the irrigation fluid will continuously go in inside the uh, bladder and can increase pressure and lead to bladder perforation. And the one is the obturator reflex as pointed by the Usama. And sometimes uh, when you uh, put use the catheter after TRP on a guide. So uh, I remember one case and uh, when I was introducing catheter, uh, previously we were introducing catheters on a guide. So it was very stiff end, but we then abandoned it. So inadvertently uh, I entered into the bladder from the side of uh, urethra. So then bladder injury occurred, but it was a uh, uh, small rent probably. So we managed it by putting a catheter for urethra through cystoscope and superpubic. So sometimes placement of catheter on guide uh, yes. causes this. Uh, so I think preferable is you, if you are feeling difficulty in passing uh, catheter after TRP, two things uh, should come in mind. One that uh, we didn't perform uh, complete TRP. There is a residual tissue or there is a cavity where your catheter is uh, stuck up. So again, we should go inside by cystoscope, pass a guide wire and then a slide catheter over guide wire under VN. So that, that is, I think, proper way. So sometimes it happens uh, when you use guide. Yes, sir. Uh, Yes, doctor. Extraperitoneal injury almost uh, is almost always associated with pelvic fracture. The uh, highest risk of extraperitoneal uh, injury occurs if there is disruption of pelvic ring and diastasis of pubic symphysis greater than one centimeter, and pubic MI fractures. Intraperitoneal injury occurs with sudden rise of intravesical pressures, and the weakest point is the dome of the bladder. So the risk factors uh, include pre-existing neuropathic disease, prior urological surgery, and malignancy of the bladder. This is the table which shows the incidence of hydrogenic bladder injury during various surgical procedures. In this, we can see that uh, in obstetric cases, uh, C-section is the most common cause, which uh, uh, includes 0 0.08 to 0.94% of the bladder trauma, and robotic radical hysterectomy is the gynecological procedure which uh, constitutes 4.38 to 4.59% of the bladder trauma. In general surgical procedures, abdominal cytoreductive surgery 
has the greatest incidence while in urological surgery we have retropubic male sling procedure and turb which is not mentioned in this procedure but it accounts for 3 to 3.5 to 58% of the bladder injury so moving on to the clinical presentation the it is uh, bladder trauma is associated with other non urological life threatening injuries focusing on the bladder trauma the patients may present with hematuria which is the most common complaint of the patient or uh, it is most common sign which we observe the suprapubic so, pain uh, you should not say may present but uh, literature says that uh, it is common yes, presentation uh, hematuria is a common presentation after bladder injury so it happens in most of the cases hematuria suprapubic pain or abdominal distension due to urinary ascites uh, inability to void or reduce urine output uremia and raised creatinine due to intraperitoneal absorption of urine entry or exit wound at the lower abdomen perineum or buttocks in the cases of penetrating injuries so uh, as in all cases history is most important secondly examination and thirdly we'll move on to the uh, in investigations in the history uh, as we have already discussed the history of trauma is most important the mode of injury is most important and uh, the history of hematuria suprapubic pain whether the patient complains of abdominal distension is he passing stools or not and uh, on examination our points are uh, points to focus will be uh, the general look of the patient which uh, uh, general look of the patient with the vital vitals of the patient and then we'll move on focusing on the bladder trauma whether the patient has hematuria or not suprapubic uh, tenderness is there or not abdominal distension is there or not and uh, then we'll move on to the investigations of the patient so the clinical indicators of bladder trauma include suprapubic pain or tenderness abdominal distension or ileus inability to void or low urine output hematuria associated with pelvic fracture and large scrotum with ecchymosis and free intraperitoneal fluid on ultrasound or ct scan according to the classification of aast uh, bladder trauma is classified into four uh, into five grades grade 1 includes hematoma uh, In, in which the injury type is hematoma and description of injury includes contusion or intramural hematoma and a laceration which is partial thickness grade 2 uh, shows that the the laceration is extra peritoneal and it is less than 2 cm grade 3 uh, may be extra peritoneal which is greater than 2 cm or intra peritoneal less than 2 cm grade 4 includes intra peritoneal uh, bladder wall laceration greater than 2 cm while the grade 5 laceration may be intraperitoneal or extraperitoneal and it extra, it uh, extends into the bladder neck or the ureteral orifice now this is the image showing uh, illustrating our previous discussion this is the contusion in the bladder wall which is, is the grade 1 here this is the grade 2 type of injury which is extraperitoneal and less than 2 cm this is grade 3 type of injury which is extra peritoneal and the rent is greater than 2 cm this is again depicting the grade 3 type of injury which is uh, less than 2 cm and the rent is intra peritoneal this is uh, depicts the grade 4 type of injury with a rent of, uh, which is intra peritoneal and greater than 2 cm this is the grade 5 type of injury which is in which is extra peritoneal actually here uh, and is involving the trigon of the bladder investigations uh, which are specific to the bladder trauma includes cystogram ct cystogram cystoscopy and ultrasound uh, cystogram is the preferred modality for non atrogenic and suspected atrogenic uh, uh, trauma in post op settings both plain cystogram and ct uh, cystogram have comparable sensitivity which is 90 to 95% and 100% specificity the absolute indication to get a ct uh, ct or plain cystogram is gross hematuria which is associated with pelvic fracture uh, 
and uh, bladder trauma occurs in about 29% of such patients. Relative indications include gross hematuria without pelvic fracture or uh, micro hematuria with pelvic fracture. Penetrating injuries of the buttock, pelvis or lower abdomen with any degree of hematuria warrant cystography. Mm -hmm. Now, so which one is preferred? Cystogram is preferred or CT cystogram is preferred if, if it's available? So it's, uh, plain cystogram and CT cystogram, if we focus on the only on the bladder, then plain cystogram must be preferred. But if we uh, look in the whole scenario of the trauma in the case of a road traffic accident or warfare injuries, so we will, uh, it's better to get a CT urogram as it will rule out other abdominal injuries as well. Sir, I would like to add on that point. Uh, if uh, the CT cystogram is preferred modality because it is in CT cystogram, we can have a three-dimensional view of the bladder and the pelvis in which we can, which in the minor injuries can be missed in plain or simple cystogram. So CT cystogram is preferred modality in which we can also look for the bony bony chips that can be uh, seen in uh, causing the bladder injury. And you can classify by CT cystogram. You mentioned that classification, mm -hmm. one centimeter, two centimeter. So simple cystogram will not tell you that this uh, specification of uh, size of the rent. So CT cystogram will tell you. If it's not available, then your right cystogram is uh, equally good. It will tell you that uh, there is a bladder injury and uh, it, it will also tell you that it's extraperitoneal or intraperitoneal. So preferred is CT cystogram if it's available. If it's not, then cystogram. Uh, retrograde cystogram. Second thing is patient uh, uh, is stable and may be shifted to the radiology okay. suit then then it's preferred if it's not then cystogram you can do it in operation theater you can do it in your radiology suit uh, in the ward retrograde cystography is nearly 100 percent accurate if performed precisely in cooperative and conscious patient bladder should be filled up to the sense of discomfort discomfort and otherwise up to 350 ml Plain film technique includes three images, which uh, uh, are control image, full bladder uh, endroposterior film, and the drainage film. The drainage film must be obtained as posterior exercisation of the contrast can be missed without this film. This is the uh, pictorial representation of the plain cystogram, which shows that uh, the intraperitoneal injury in which the contrast material is extravasating in the peritoneal cavity. And this is the uh, pictorial representation of cystogram with this extraperitoneal and the contrast material is extravasating in the extraperitoneal space. This is another image showing uh, extraperitoneal bladder injury, which shows the uh, typical flame sign in the cases of extraperitoneal injury. And the contrast is draining in the scrotum and around the bladder in the extraperitoneal space. This image illustrates the intraperitoneal contrast extravasation with the red arrows showing the spread into the peritoneal cavity surrounding the loops of the bowel. And here it shows uh, that the contrast is draining in the left paracolic gutters. Moving on to CT urogram. CT urogram is superior in identification of bony fragments in the bladder and bladder neck injuries as well as concomitant abdominal injuries. Bladder must be filled in retrograde manner with contrast material diluted up to 2 to 4 percent to avoid scatter artifact. Now this is the classification uh, of bladder injury on the basis of CT scan. The type 1 urinary bladder injury basically includes the, only the contusion of the bladder wall. There is no contrast extravasation in type 1 urinary bladder injury. In type 2 urinary bladder injury, the urinary bladder injury is intraperitoneal rupture. And here we can see these small two dots, which shows that the contrast is, uh, contrast material is around the bowel loops. Uh, 
and here we can see the rent in the bladder wall at the dome of the bladder. The third type is interstitial urinary bladder injury in which the contrast does not extravasate uh, in the either extraperitoneal or intraperitoneal space, rather it remains within the bladder wall. Type 4 bladder injury may be simple or complex. The simple uh, injury as uh, the simple injury in which the con uh, contrast material exercises just outside the bladder and it does not spread into the scrotal or penile space and uh, it characteristically gives the sunburst appearance around the bladder. This is the type 5 uh, urinary bladder injury which is basically the combination of type 2 and type 4 injury that is intraperitoneal and extraperitoneal injury. Yes, Dr. Usama. Uh, <clears throat> sir, while performing, um, while performing cystogram, should we also take the oblique image? Because sometimes the, if the contrast exacerbation is from the posterior wall or bladder, it may not be visible on the anterior posterior. Should yes, we sir. also take the oblique, oblique film? Yes, very right. Moving on to cystoscopy. Uh, cystoscopy is the preferred method for detection of intraoperative injuries. It localizes the lesion in relation to the position of the trigone and ureteral orifices. Lack of bladder distension suggests that there is a large perforation in the bladder. Ultrasonography is insufficient alone. It can be used to visualize intraperitoneal fluid or extraperitoneal collection of fluid. Moving on to the management of uh, bladder trauma. Uh, the management options we have are conservative or surgical uh, treatment, surgical repair of the bladder. So uh, co the conservative, the principles of conservative treatment are clinical observation, continuous bladder drainage, and antibiotic prophylaxis. Conservative management is the standard treatment of uncomplicated extraperitoneal and in intraperitoneal injury, that is, in the absence of peritonitis and ileus. If the lien is larger, intraperitoneal drain may be placed. In these situations, when conditions are ideal, that is the patient is not in ileus and there is no chance of peritonitis and we have picked the injury early. Urethral catheter management alone suffices. Large bore 22 FR catheter should be used to promote adequate drainage. Cystography is necessary to verify complete healing before catheter removal 14 days after the injury. In case of extravasation, continue with bladder drainage until radiographic confirmation of healing uh, is achieved. Antibiotics should be continued for 7 days to avoid infection. This is the pictorial representation of a uh, patient which has been managed conservatively. The first image shows uh, the uh, uh, just right after the trauma, the cystography film, which shows that the contrast is extra visiting into the extraperitoneal space, while 14 days after the management with the bladder with bladder drainage only, we get a full bladder without any contrast to extra visitation, uh, so the catheter can be removed in this patient. Moving on to surgical management. Uh, the indications for immediate repair of bladder injury includes intraperitoneal injury from external trauma, penetrating or iatrogenic non-urological injury, inadequate bladder drainage or clots in the urine, bladder neck injury, rectal or vaginal injury along with bladder injury, open pelvic fracture, open pelvic fracture which is requiring redu open reduction and internal fixation, selected stable patients which are undergoing laparotomy for any other reason and the bone fragments which are projecting into the bladder. Penetrating or intraperitoneal injuries should be managed by immediate operative repair. These injuries are often larger than suggested on cystography and un are unlikely to heal spontaneously. Prolonged urine leak may cause chemical peritonitis or abscess. When operating without prior imaging, the ureteric orifices should be inspected for clear efflux of the urine. Ureteral integrity may be confirmed by retrograde passage of ureteric catheter in the ureter or IV administration of methylene blue or indigo carmine. 
the injuries involving ureteric orifices or intramural ureters they warrant primary closure with stented reimplantation of the ureters and a perivesical drain placement in repaired bladder cystogram can be obtained after 7 to 10 days and in case uh, there is no exacerbation of contrast we can remove the catheter uh, when we have a radiographic evidence that no contrast exacerbation is happening several studies suggest that additional suprapubic drainage provides no additional benefit than urethral catheter drainage alone in cases of bladder trauma now sir the bladder is repaired in a continuous manner in two layers with running 30 vicral suture uh, for the mucosa and running 20 vicral sutures for the muscularis layer Uh, before repairing the bladder we must remove any revitalized tissue which is uh, uh, which can be seen during the surgery and intravesical or extra vesical clots must be removed in cases of concurrent rectal or vaginal injuries the organ walls should be separated overlapping uh, suture lines should be avoided and we must interpose viable tissue between the repaired structures moving on to complications uh, early diagnosis and management promotes excellent results and minimum morbidity in cases of bladder trauma serious complications usually occur due to delayed presentation missed diagnosis and devastating pelvic trauma unrecognized bladder injuries may manifest as azotemia acidosis fever and sepsis low urine output peritonitis ileus and urinary ascites unrecognized bladder neck vaginal or rectal injuries may result in incontinence fistula formation stricture and difficult delayed major reconstruction surgery severe pelvic trauma may cause transient or permanent neurological injury causing voiding difficulty despite adequate bladder repair So moving on to the follow up uh if the bladder is conservatively treated bladder injuries are followed up by cystography to rule out extravasation and ensure that the bladder has healed uh first cystography is planned 10 days after the surgery uh, after conservative management if ongoing leak occurs cystoscopy should be done to rule out bony fragments within the bladder wall and then cystography uh, must be performed 7 days later After operative repair of simple bladder injury catheter can be removed in 5 to 10 days without cystography and in cases of complex injury which involves a trigone and uh, in cases which we in which we have performed ureteric reimplantation uh, or risk factors which of delayed healing cystography is advised before catheter removal for conservatively treated internal atrogenic bladder trauma for extra peritoneal injuries catheter drainage for 5 days suffices and for intra peritoneal injuries catheter drainage for 7 days suffices these are the recommendations according to the european association guidelines thank you